Out of nowhere, a massive billboard crashes down in the airport. Shattered glass flies everywhere like deadly shrapnel, striking a young boy and knocking him out cold. His parents freak out and desperately dial 911 for help. Out of the crowd, a doctor rushes over. The doctor quickly assesses the boy and realizes a blood vessel in his neck is torn, blood gushing out. He snatches a clean cloth and presses it against the boy's neck. Suddenly, a young guy shouts, You're hurting him! Frustrated, the doctor thinks, I'm trying to save him. He's gonna bleed out! But the young man counters, No, you're wrong. If he were an adult, sure. But he's just a kid. You're blocking his airway! The young man steps in, gently moves the doctor's hand aside, and the boy starts to breathe again. <gasps> he then quickly checks the boy's abdomen and spots a shard of glass. The young man reassures everyone he's going to be okay. The doctor, taken aback by the young man's confidence, asks who he is. Sean Murphy. I'm a doctor, he replies. Sean examines the boy's arm and notices vein swelling. Then he looks at the boy's chest. Suddenly, a complete picture of the boy's anatomy flashes in his mind. Clearly, he's got a gift for medicine. Sean realizes the boy has a pressure issue in his chest. The doctor immediately counters, No! His chest is moving! He's breathing just fine! Sean explains, but it's not normal. His left lung might be hurt. It looks like a pneumothorax. We need to act fast! He yells, Who has a sharp knife? At least four inches long. But it's the airport. No one's carrying a knife. Sean tells the doctor, get ready to give him rescue breaths. His breathing is about to fail. I'll be right back. Sean races to the security checkpoint to borrow a knife. Due to his autism and communication challenges, he struggles to get his point across. The security staff thinks he's just confused. They've never dealt with someone asking to borrow a knife before. They firmly deny his request. Desperate, Sean insists this is an emergency and that he needs to save a life. The knife in that box will work. Please lend it to me. But the security guards, still puzzled, stand their ground. Realizing time is running out, Sean grabs a knife and bolts. He runs about 65 feet before being chased down and tackled to the ground. Thankfully, the boy's mother arrives just in time to clarify the situation. Five minutes later, the child is struggling to breathe. The doctor is giving non-stop rescue breaths. And finally, Sean has what he needs. A small knife, a tube, tape, and two bottles of alcohol. Oh man, Sean is about to perform a chest procedure right here. Watch as he showcases incredible skills that leave everyone in awe. Sean places the knife and tube on the boy, then pours whiskey over them. The whiskey is about 86 proof, serves to disinfect both the tools and the incision. He takes the small knife and cuts the tube in half, then inserts one end into the whiskey bottle and seals the opening with tape. In his mind, Sean has already has mapped out the procedure expelling the air around the lung to restore its function. He begins the procedure while the boy's parents can't bear to look. The doctor watches Sean with a mix of confusion and concern. The surgery goes smoothly as Sean inserts a tube into the boy's body. He lifts the bottle and bubbles start to form instantly inside. The doctor finally can't help but ask, what's that bottle for? Sean replies, the tube lets air out and the water in the bottle prevents air from coming back in. The makeshift one-way valve works perfectly, and the boy starts to breathe again. He's breathing. Applause erupts from the crowd around them. This marks Sean's first time saving a life, the start of his legendary journey as a doctor. In the ambulance, Sean notices the boy's heartbeat is irregular, but the paramedics mock him. What data can you read on this old junk? Once they arrive at the hospital, Sean urgently insists to Dr. Claire Brown that they must do an echocardiogram on the boy. Claire counters that, according to the current data, the heart appears fine. Sean attempts to argue and even tries to force his way inside, but security quickly escorts him out. The boy is wheeled into the operating room, and the lead surgeon, Dr. Neil Melendez, is amazed by the one-way valve Sean made. Claire questions, do you think we should do an echo? Neil replies, no need based on the symptoms. Outside, Sean is frantic. The main door is blocked, the side door is closed, and he can't get through the revolving door either. He tries every possible way to get in but fails. Meanwhile, during the surgery, Neil notices the boy's heart rate starting to shift, an alarming sign. He asks Claire why she dismissed the echo request. She explains it was that young guy outside who requested it. He's the one who made the valve. Neil wonders how Sean could have predicted this. Is he smarter than me? He wonders, deciding to have the team perform the echocardiogram. 
They rush out to find Sean. Neil asks Sean why he wanted the echo. Sean explains that the boy has a condition caused by pericardial effusion. At that moment, the OR calls to inform Neil that the echo results are in, everything is normal, and there's no pericardial effusion. Looks like this young man was wrong and wasted my time, Neil mutters, turning back toward the OR. But Claire, sensing Sean's potential, invites him to join her in the OR. Sean, who has autism, is a brilliant doctor. He carefully reviews the echocardiogram images over and over again, while the other doctors grow impatient, insisting the results are normal. But Sean senses something isn't right. He spots a subtle deformity in the right heart. The other doctors resist, refusing to heed Sean's recommendation for pericardial surgery. Claire interjects, suggesting it could be glass shards that have traveled through the veins to the heart. She elaborates on risk of pericardial effusion, and eventually Neil agrees to proceed with Sean's surgical plan. Thirty minutes later, Neil opens the boy's chest, uncovering a pea-sized shard of glass near the heart. This shard presents a grave threat to the boy's life. Sean's intuition saves the day once more as he is able to detect subtle abnormalities in the unclear images, a truly remarkable skill. Meanwhile, today is also the day Sean interviews for a position at the hospital. In another part of the hospital, the administration holds a heated discussion, and nearly everyone is dissatisfied with Sean's application. The higher-ups convince that Sean with autism can't be a good doctor. They worry about the significant responsibilities if something goes wrong. However, the hospital director has complete faith in Sean because he's watched him grow up like a nephew. Suddenly, a video of Sean saving the boy at the airport goes viral. The clip spreads across social media, and Sean is hailed as a genius doctor, shifting the higher-ups' attitudes. The director invites Sean to present an introduction during his interview. When Sean steps onto the stage, he struggles to utter a word. At last, he summons the courage to share his story. He opens up about feeling insecure as a child, being bullied at school, and facing disdain from his father. The only person who truly protected him was his brother. After the heartbreaking loss of his pet rabbit, Sean resolved to become a doctor. His brother gifted him a toy scalpel and told him, Always remember, you're the smartest. You can do anything. I'm proud of you. Sean still carries that cherished toy scalpel with him. Tragically, during a game of hide-and-seek in a warehouse, his brother fell and passed away. Sean reflects, My brother's death has haunted me. He should have had the chance to grow up. I want to help others and make that happen. His heartfelt words touch everyone in the room. He successfully passes the interview and becomes a doctor at St. Bonaventure Hospital. Wearing the white coat fits him perfectly. A great healer has arrived, ready to embark on a new chapter in his life. This is the first episode of The Good Doctor Season 1. Are you enjoying the show? If so, drop a one in the comments. We'll pick up next time. All right, that's it for today. Don't forget to follow and subscribe. See you next time. Bye-bye.